Dear Christian friends who are saved by grace alone, and what a joy it is to know that and to believe it in our hearts so that we have confidence and hope as we live in that grace now and into eternity. In the English language, there are uh, several words that you can find that are the same word when you speak them, and yet they have just a little bit of different connotation to them. Let me give you a couple of examples. There's uh, the word sign. The word sign can refer to something that's out on the road that has writing on it, and you use that sign to give you direction, right? As it's right there, a, a physical sign. Sometimes, though, we might use the word sign in a slightly different way, like something happens in our life, some circumstance or happening, and we say, it's a sign that I should do this or do that. Now, a road sign is there, and it's a physical road sign that's there to give you direction, right? But sometimes we might also say that a sign is something out there that's not a physical thing, but it still is meant, we think, to give us direction. You see how it works? Same word, just a little bit different character to it. We'll also use the word address. We can use the word address to mean what I'm doing right now. I am addressing a crowd. It's a mode of communication, specifically in that, in that context, in speaking. But I also use the word address when I write a letter, right? And I, 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 I say I addressed the letter to this person. And it's sort of the same thing because we're still trying to communicate to somebody. It's the same word, just a little bit different connotation to it. Well, in the Bible, there are certain words that uh, kind of do the same thing as we speak about them, especially as we speak, speak about them in, in the English language. And one word that I really want you to get a handle on today in order to understand what God has to say to us in his word is, are you ready? Word. It's the word, word. In the Bible, sometimes we see the word, word, meaning two things, although they're very closely connected. Now you might think, well, that the first one that you think is pretty easy, right? We think of the word word, meaning the word, God's word, as written to us in the Bible. And so we have God's word is the word. But there's another way that the Bible uses the word word, and that is to describe this, Jesus. In John chapter 1, Jesus is described as the word. And it says, in the beginning was the word. And so in, when you're reading your Bible, sometimes the word will be expressing the word, and sometimes the word will be expressing the word. It's the word that tells us about the word and the word that gives us the word. Confused? <laughs> All right. Hopefully, by the end of this sermon, you won't be as confused, but you'll be able to understand how important it is to recognize that the word and the word are very closely connected and, are, 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 and have a lot to say about us and our comfort, and our hope, and our salvation. All right? So in the Word, we have the Word, and the Word tells us the Word. Whew. Open up your bulletins to our sermon text for today from John chapter 8, where the Word tells us something extremely important about the Word for our eternal life. If you look at just that first paragraph there. To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said... If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In these words, the Word tells us something about the Word that's really important. The Word says that if you hold to what? My teaching, he says, right? Which is the Word. So the Word says, if you hold to my Word, then you are really disciples of the Word. <laughs> right? If you hold to my teaching, Jesus says, you are really my disciples. We here who are seated today, worshiping God, desire to be disciples of 
the word, don't we? And the word says, the way that you know that you're truly my disciple is if you hold on to my word. And that's a pretty simple concept, right? It makes a little bit of sense. But Jesus goes on to further explain this in order to, to really nail it down. And he does that by using another word that has a couple different connotations to it. And that word is truth. Jesus says, if you really want to be a disciple of the word, then you hold on to the word. And then you will know the truth, Jesus says. Well, here's a pretty cool thing about the word truth. In, later on in the book of John, Jesus prays to the Father, Lord, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Jesus says the truth is in the word. But also in the book of John, Jesus says about himself, I am the way, the truth and the life. And so now we have truth being used in the same thing, for the same thing, right? The word is the word, and the word is the word. The truth is the word, and the truth is the word. Get it? So Jesus says, if you're going to be his disciple, you hold on to the word, which tells you about the word. And then you know the truth about the word. And he says, that truth will set you free. We, dear friends, disciples of Jesus, have freedom through the word. Both the word that tells us about the word and the word who gives us the word. So now, if you have a handle on that, that these things are the essential in your life, the word is essential because it gives you freedom, Jesus says, then the logical question to ask is, freedom from what? Why should I care to get into the word and to see the word? What do I need to be freed from? And that's exactly what the people who were listening to Jesus asked. Look in your bulletins again to the next paragraph. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How then can you say that we shall be set free? Let's stop right there. The people that Jesus was talking to at this time were people of the word. They were Jews. They were God's people. They acknowledged that they knew that they were God's people. The Abraham that was told to them in about in the word. They said, we're descendants of that Abraham. We are God's people. We have God's word. But by asking the question and by stating, we're Abraham's descendants, we don't need to be set free from anything, what they showed was that they had a misunderstanding about the word, and because they had a misunderstanding about the word, then they had no use for the word. So what was their misunderstanding? Well, the Jewish people, especially at the time of Jesus, they knew that they were people of the word that God had spoken to them. The law and the prophets, the Old Testament that they had at that time, that was theirs. God had chosen them out of all the nations of the world and started them with the patriarch named Abraham. And he had brought them into be this great nation and he gave them the word. But the problem at the time of Jesus was that when these people looked at the word, they never saw the word. They only saw the law. They only saw the fact that they were God's chosen people and that God gave to them the law. And God said, if you will remain my people, right? if you will be my disciples, then obey the law. Obey the law. And so the Jews from time and time and time again said, we are people of the word. We are God's people. We have the law. And as long as we stick to that law, then we're going to be okay because we're God's people. And by thinking that their whole lives were based on the law, and that's all that they had, they never realized that they had any need for the word. 
And so Jesus comes to set them straight. And he says, no, 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 no. It's not just saying that I am a person of God. I'm a person with the law that sets you free and that makes you God's disciple. It's by holding to my teaching, the word says, that you are really my disciple. You see, the Jews, by only holding on to what they held on to, which was the law, we're missing a whole lot of what the Word was trying to tell them. Because the Word is not just about the law, and if you can obey the law well enough, then God will be okay with you. But the Word, even that they had, had mostly to do with sin. From the very opening pages of the Word, what do we discover? Adam and Eve sinned. They put themselves out of a relationship with God by that sin. And throughout the ages, over and over and over again, what even the Jews' word told them was that they were sinners. And that sinners kept going against God's word and kept rebelling against him over and over and over again. And when they read the word, they shouldn't have just been reading the word to say, well, we're Abraham's descendants and this book is about our nation. And aren't we wonderful? But instead, they should have been looking at, this, at the people that were even part of their nation that had a big problem. They should have seen Adam and Eve right from the start sinning. They should have seen Cain killing his son because he was a sinner. They should have seen all the sin of Joseph's brothers as they sold him into slavery and lied about it. They should have seen King David lament time and time and time again about their sin. They should have seen in the prophets how God was not just trying to draw them back in order so that they could be the nation of God, but he was drawing them back because they were sinning and rebelling against him. But because these Jews at Jesus' time chose to just say, hey, we're Abraham's descendants, we're people of God, we have the law, we're hunky-dory, they were missing the point. And the first point of the word is to say, we are sinners. And the wages of sin is death and eternal condemnation. And unless we understand that aspect and that important teaching of the word, then we will have no use for the word. But if when we read the word, we see our God condemning us because of our sin, then we will be ready to hear what the word says. And so Jesus takes these people to task and he brings it back down to the most simple level that says, you are sinners. That's what this declares. And you need this word to get you out of it.